Good morning. Good morning. Real quick mailbag. So uh, a lot of you guys really like Boba, my dog. He is a cute dog, I will admit. He's like my sidekick, you know. Um, I got a package today from uh, Amazon. I don't usually get stuff from Amazon all that much. But, uh, I don't know. Just gets me right here. Subscriber Sam. Samuel Sandoval. You've sent me, like, uh, two, three things over the past month or so. I really appreciate it, man. You're, you're awesome, man. I appreciate it. But, but look what came in the mail today. I got a, another gift receipt, and it says, a gift for you. It says, hey, Henry, I almost forgot the star of your show. Keep those videos coming. Boba, from subscriber Sam. Sam, you bought my dog something? He's such a nice guy, man. <laughs> You bought Boba a jar of milk bones. I'm gonna go give him one right now. Sam, thanks a lot, buddy. I really appreciate it, man. Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry of Mowers and Blowers again. Um, I've been pretty busy, you know. Uh, I've sold some stuff. Sold my John Deere Saber lawn tractor with the uh, bagger on it. Sold it for six fifty uh, a couple of days ago. And then yesterday, I finally sold my uh, Toro Pro Line Thirty Two Walk Behind. Uh, comes with a bagger, extra blade, you can give him an extra fuel filter too, uh, oil filter. So I sold that, as you guys know, I got that for free, right? And uh, <clears throat> I actually listed it for 1200 and uh, some of you subscribers uh, actually told me that, you know, um, yeah, that, that should go, you know? Like my friend uh, Jason Pate of Pate's Performance and uh, Robert Nighthawk. Robert Nighthawk actually says, don't sell it less than 800 I'm telling you, you're going to get it! been three four months man and uh, I've lowered it down to 800 nobody even thinks about contacting me you know few here and there but they're all flakes you know so finally uh, some guy finally did say a hey, uh, I'll give you 600 and I'll pick it up today and I'm like come on over it's yours I just want it out I haven't used it all summer you know I don't think I'm gonna use it you know and um, well it takes up a lot of space in my, uh, you know, shed. So I sold it for 600 last night, but it's money coming in, hoard going out, which is what I want. Winter's around the corner. I don't want lawnmowers packing up my garage, you know what I mean? Uh, so look, um, with winter coming, I really should get the snowblowers going, right? I need to fix the chute on that push snowblower. Everything works except for the chute. I checked the prices on the shoe. It's like $30 for just the coupler. I'm not spending $30 on a coupler when this thing's only worth like 100, 150 bucks, you know what I mean? Even though it does run pretty well, you know? Uh, also, I have uh, this track drive listed for 75 bucks as is, you know? But uh, it's missing the belt cover for the uh, drive belts, right? Uh, it's missing a dipstick. Cletus, you dipstick. And uh, I think there's something going on with the uh, drive system down there. I saw the chain just hanging, so I haven't even looked at it yet, you know? But uh, the engine starts and kind of runs, you know? So it needs a car clean, but it seems like it's okay, you know? Uh, but I just went to my bag of parts and I uh, just got some parts. I was thinking about creating, instead of buying the chute, get you closer so you know what I'm talking about here. So this is the um, push snowblower, right? The chute that I have is for a different type. It's for kind of like that, you know what I mean? That kind of chute will not work for this. Rather, I need something like something like this, you know? Kind that goes down like this with the teeth that go downwards as opposed to horizontal, you know? This is the kind of chute that I need, but at least the coupler. That's like 30 bucks what I saw. 
So I'm going to uh, fabricate this to fit on here, right? And instead of using the crank to turn it, I'll just put a handle here so that you can turn it by hand, the direction, you know? Hey, better than nothing, you know? Uh, here, I have the two keepers, right? But I'm missing one. So I'm going to try to fabricate something that looks like this. In addition, as I said, this track drive one had a spark plug stuck into the dipstick hole because the dipstick was missing. Well, I happen to have an extra Tecumseh dipstick from a Tecumseh 5 horsepower engine. So, uh, and that, that one had stuck valves. I just left the block in my shed, you know, in case one day I might need parts. And so I'm just stealing the dipstick off of it, you know. It, it ought to fit. This has the remnants of a dipstick. It's actually screw-in, which is pretty cool. So the dipstick broke in half is what happened. And hopefully this will fit. Look at that, huh? Plug and play. So now it's got a dipstick. If I start the engine, dip, uh, Earl will shoot out, you know what I'm saying? So that's uh, one down, one one little thing that's done. Uh, if I sell it as is, I'll sell it as is. You know, he can have the dipstick. So I'm not going to look at that yet. I'm going to try to fabricate something for my uh, snowblower shoot. If I get that figured out and this kind of figured out a little bit, this tractor from that same Mega Pick is next on the list. This shouldn't be crazy. I mean, it's complete and everything. Just been sitting for a while. So who knows? I might have great luck and just start this up. You know, I probably just jinxed it now. But it uh, needs a battery, which I do not have. Well, there we go. I got the shoot on. And it was pretty easy. It's kind of ingenious how I did it, too, if I do say so myself. Got one of those covers, you know, from a front self-propelled lawnmower. The cover that covers up the gear on the inside of the wheel. I had an old one, cut around it, made one of these keeper things. Get some two self-tapping screws on the bottom. And it just rolls freely. Put some grease around that area. This handle here to allow you to turn it. This is the handle from my grinder that I never used. Took the handle, cut the bolt off. Two self-tapping screws right in there. This thing works great. Not a bad snowblower at all. I'll list this for 225? 225. I had to remove the original crank because it was getting in the way of that uh, chute. I fixed it and I didn't spend any money on it and it works. This is the tractor that I got from Motherload 23. 
It was one of uh, four or five items that uh, I got for free that day. My buddies Larry and uh, Bob came to help me and uh, we got two snow blowers, a chipper shredder, and a power washer. I sold the power washer as is for $75. No, I listed it for $75. I got 40. I gave half to uh, Larry and Bob because they helped me bring it back. And a deal's a deal. Um, I got that push snow blower all fixed, as you just saw. I have the uh, track drive one still sitting here. I'm selling that as is because even though I did get a uh, dipstick for it, that belt cover is very expensive. It's like 30 bucks, which I'm not going to spend. Also, the chute is cracked. Also, it could have drive problems, and it probably needs a carb clean. Um, I don't know what the drive problems are, but you know what? Uh, I listed this for 75 bucks firm. If somebody wants it, they can come get it for $75. If I don't sell it uh, this year, I'll try to fix it. Maybe I'll run into a, a cover or something, you know? Uh, bagger system also came with that deal, and I put it on my LT1000. And because I got that bagger on the LT1000, I was able to sell my uh, John Deere Sabre that had a bagger. Always got to have one with a bagger for your own stuff, right? So, uh, I don't know anything about this uh, tractor other than the fact that it looks complete. The hood is definitely not from this because this hood doesn't fit this tractor. The way the tractor is shaped, right, it's rounded corners, so it's supposed to have that rounded hood from a typical LT1000. This hood makes it look older than it actually is. Just for uh, reference, take a look at the uh, model number. Looks like this is a 2000 model. 06, 07, 2000. So it's not that old. It's still 19 years if you think about it. I've got no battery. I don't know how I'm going to try this. I don't have a battery because they're all in my machines. I um, guess I could get a uh, car battery and just put some cables on there or I put my charger up to it so the reason why this hood you know it doesn't belong here is because it doesn't fit why doesn't fit because it has the original plenum on here this plenum is designed for the metal well this is also metal but the rounded hood you know so I'm gonna take this hood off So it's easier to work. And this has a 14.5 horsepower overhead valve, single cylinder Briggs and Stratton. Everything looks okay to it, you know, I mean, for what it is. There's nothing disconnected or anything. Um, that is the brake rod which is probably was missing a couple of cotter pins. All you got to do is just shove them on there. I don't know where that spring is from, but if you look at the deck, the deck is Dunsky. Yeah, there's no way I'm going to keep that deck. It's rotted to heck, but uh, maybe the pulleys and the spindles and the springs and the rods and the hangers are all good, and the deflector over there is good. Uh, this did come with another deck, but I question whether or not it will fit or not. But let's just check the essentials first before we try to start this thing. Number one, I need a battery. So I'm going to go find more charger. Oh, man, it's got really foul smelling gas. Really foul. I might have to take this gas tank off, which is very easy. It's just two 3 8 bolts. To take the plenum and the gas tank off. And I'll flip it upside down, blow it out with uh, compressed air. Guarantee you we're going to have carburetor problems, right? Everything's pretty caked on there. It's got the correct fuel filter. This is one for gravity fed. Hoses seem okay, you know, kind of rubbery. I know it looks like hell, but it feels rubbery. So I'm going to get a battery, clean out the gas tank. 
right? Put some fresh gas in there, and then we could uh, try to start it. If it doesn't start, I'll take this cover off and blow some fluid into the carburetor mouth and see if it turns over. So I couldn't find a battery, so I've got my charger connected right to the wires. I know that's not a good way to do it. You know, it's not not a right not the right connection. Also, the uh, ignition switch had a busted key on the inside, so I had to swap out the ignition switch. I'm lucky I had one already. Look what happens when I turn it. So it's just not enough electricity to turn it, you know. Turns a little bit, but I need to find a battery. I'll keep looking. So I put this monster car battery on there. It has to be on its side, otherwise the uh, cables won't reach. I was fortunate that actually it had dual terminals, so I can put them on that way. Anyway, it uh, sort of holds a charge, not really though. I'm just going to see if it cranks. Yeah! Alrighty. So let's get to removing the uh, fuel tank. I don't know what's in here, but it's like black silicones inside. It's not going to start. Seriously, don't know why there would be silicone in it, but uh, just getting a Q-tip here and cleaning it up. Look at that. Why would there be silicone in there? Just crazy. Unless it's just like a, a hose deteriorating from the um, gas. I'm going to blow this out with my air compressor. So I got a new hose on there. It uh, doesn't have a fuel shut off yet. It's just one hose running from the tank to the carburetor. I wanted to show you the old hoses. If you could see here, it's completely collapsed on the inside. That's what the black was. Just completely rotted hoses. Collapsed on the inside. I just put a little bit of gas in the tank after I cleaned it out. I'm going to check the Earl. And the Earl is dirty, but uh, above full. It is dirty. You know what? Let's just see what happens. Thanks. That battery 
is only going to be enough to do one try, you know? I'm going to take off the air cleaner, blow some fluid in there, see if it starts up. If not, fuel's not getting to the carburetor and it needs a carburetor clean. This is interesting. Doesn't look too bad though, doesn't look too dirty. Look at that. You guys see what I see? Rat's nest! That actually doesn't look too bad. Let me get some starting fluid. Let's spray some starting fluid in here. Give it a try. all that stuff fly out of a thing? That's pretty bad. How about that? Start it up. That's great news. Great news. I'm going to take the cover off. Just took the uh, starter cover off. Using the dipstick screw. Cletus, you dipstick! Cletus, you know what you are? You're a dipstick! A 14 carat dipstick! Took all the bolts off of this cover. Here we go! Cool! Yeah! I'm not lucky enough to actually have a mouse. Because I like getting mice. Probably shouldn't have taken the uh, couple of Don't want to get any stuff in here. Not that I'm not going to take this apart, I am. Let me just stuff this rag in there. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow all this stuff out my uh, leaf blower. I gotta tell you, this thing starts up one pull, man. off this hose so that fuel doesn't fall all over the place, drip everywhere. Hey, look. It's got one of those fuel solenoids that I love so much. Right? Sometimes you can't fit a half inch nut in there, so I have this really thin thing. Right? Let's you turn it. So look, somebody, uh, I don't know, maybe not, but uh, there's no real valve on here, you know? You know what, let's see if this actually works. See? I don't think it works.
Oh, it does work. Look, see? Click, 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 click. I'm gonna cut that. Set the bowl off. It doesn't it's not wet, so fuel's not getting into the carburetor. God. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Of course it's not going to start. It's not even getting any gas. I'm taking you guys off the tripod because you got to see this. Is that crazy or what? This carburetor is trash. This carburetor is Dunsky. I'm going to take it off. I'm not even going to attempt to clean this because it's just pretty bad. So I'm going to just... Uh, Take it apart just to show you, and I'm gonna go find another carburetor. Put on this because this is just I'm not gonna waste my time with it. Oh. You know what I mean? I know you know what I mean. Screw fell. In there. Five sixteenths. Breather. Loosen the studs, just a little bit of a twist. Studs out. I think this is a wall board. Choke lever right here. Actually, it's not as bad as I thought. It looked worse because there was a big pile of crap sitting right there, you know? It's bad, but it's not that bad. This is an original ball burrow, even though you can't see it. <laughs> it's covered in crap. But it is. So it's a LMT 4 Niner Niner 3. You can see it right in there. It's the most common one on these carburetors. And while it's really dirty, on the inside it's not as bad as I thought. I mean, that's bad. Probably find them. You know what? I'm gonna go find them. I'm gonna find another one. Is this I just don't want to clean this. It's too yucky. It's too yucky. So I found another carburetor. This is uh, one I got from my buddy Nick from Medford. It's a wall bro. 7993. Just gonna take this apart real quick and see the condition of it. If it's better or worse than that one. If the bowl is in good condition, worth it, you know, to grab this one. Take me on the bowl. Of course it's going to come off. Not much better. It's crap in it, you know? It's a little 
ऊपर है gummy because when I blow into it right it doesn't fall in by itself so I'm using some uh, contact cleaner from my friends over at Lucas Oil to spray some into the main jet I always strip it so I'm not going to take it out but what I'm going to do is you use these torch tip cleaners with the bristles on them. You stuff it in there and go in and out and that'll get the little tiny holes in there. I took the float and the needle out. The needle looks like it's in good shape. The float's in good shape. It's just that it was really gummy inside here, you know. So I'm going to clean that part area so it's nice and clean and so it's not gummy. And that won't, uh, that'll allow the needle to, to move freely because it wasn't really moving. So I just tried this fuel solenoid. And guess what? Oh yeah, what a surprise. It doesn't work. It's seized. So I'm going to just cut it off. I'm going to cut it off. Yeah. There we go. I've cleaned this pretty well. As you can see. Here's the needle. Just like the knob. Cleaned up the bowl best I can. It's pretty clean. As long as the stuff in, in the bowl is not going to come off, that'll be good. So I had to stop working because some guy came and bought one of my snow blowers. I gave it away practically. It's the uh, 5.5 26 uh, Craftsman dual stage. It has the overhead valve engine. I got that for free, so I was okay with it. Um, I listed it for 375. I know that's a little um, that's a little much, um, but then a guy the guy came and he offered me 200, and I says, you know what? I've got 12. I got to get rid of some of this sh stuff. So I let him have it for 200 you know, you watch. The guy that I sell it for 200 is probably going to be the biggest pain in the yum yum. He's going to come back and say, hey Henry, it doesn't work right. Hey Henry, I want my money back. I'm like, whoa, 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 what am I, Home Depot or something, huh? You crazy? Anyway, I just took that adjustable um, fuel air mixture jet out. Just for shits and giggles.
and uh, so I'm just going to install it. It's got this kind of gasket on it, not the orange kind. You know the orange kind. It's like an O-ring. I think these are better because it completely encompasses the plate, not just an O-ring, you know. Hey Henry, the carburetor still looks dirty. Yeah, on the outside, I'll brush it off if this works. If it doesn't work, I would brush it off for nothing. Duh. So I cut the valve on the thing. And i um, going to tighten these little studs over here. I am pretty stoked that this engine runs because, uh, remember, I got this for free. Anytime you... Oh, son of a gun! What did I not do? Yes, I forgot to put the damn linkages on. See, you know, when I'm talking to people, man, I forget what I'm doing. Guys, I wish you would stop talking to me and let me work, for God's sakes. God, you guys talk too much, man. Stop distracting me, for goodness sakes. That's what happens. That's what happens when you don't pay attention, man. You do more work for no reason. All right. This mamma jamma goes in here. Where's that little one? It's supposed to be a little one. There's a little one. I'm going to put the little one in the little hole. The big one in the big hole. Choke. Here's a choke thing. Right? It's like that. Bottom up. Pivot. Goes into the channel. I said it goes into the channel. There we go. And now the studs go back on here again. Alright. Yep, I'm just uh, I'm just gonna let the videotape roll. I'm gonna let you see me do this entire thing by myself. Um I'm just letting my stuff go. I've been selling quite a lot of things lately. Like I said, I got rid of my Sabre the day before yesterday. I got rid of my Toro 32 Pro Line yesterday, uh, yesterday, last night. Today I get rid of one of my snow blowers. So, you know what? Here and there, I'm selling stuff. Okay, so seems like it's a little gummy at the choke plate here. I'm just going to spray it a little bit. It's a little gummy. Loosen it up. And also when I have the throttle all the way to choke, it doesn't close all the way. Close, but not all the way. So right here, you could bend that a little. And that's all I need is to bend it a tad, just like that. There we go. That's good. Alright, you know what? Guess what? the hounds so fuel should be draining into the float bowl it should be so far so good I don't see any leaks I mean I hope fuel is getting there we're gonna give her a try and get you further my battery is dying because my screen is dark, but I could still see it a little inside. So, um, I don't see any leaks. So far, so good. But that is, hopefully, it's getting gas, right? Sometimes you'll, you'll see marks on the float bowl because you're tapping it to make sure the float is not jammed so it will fall. Alright, let's see. 
choke. Yeah, the carburetor is not completely clean. It still needs some work. Uh, I must have missed something or it's just, I mean, I just did it pretty quick. You know what I mean? Didn't really do a comprehensive soaking, you know, or maybe I'll try another carburetor. But how about that, huh? This thing um, works and it actually runs really well. The engine runs really well, but only on choke or at least three quarters. You know what I'm saying? Three quarters choke. I did let it go a little bit, but as soon as I had, had the full uh, choke off, it wants to stall. So maybe I'll try another carburetor, but uh, that is pretty much um, getting this thing running today, which is great. See you guys next time, Mo's and Blowers! Oh! Hey guys, support my channel, buy a sticker. Also, follow me on Instagram, at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website, MowersBlowers.com. See you guys on my next vlog. Have a great day.